Congrats to SpaceX on a successful test flight. Starship has soared into the heavens. This is NASA Administrator Bill Nelson's congratulations after Starship's third flight on March 14. Honestly, the test notched a very important milestone for Starship's program, reaching orbit as Elon Musk expected. However, reaching orbit is only the fundamental condition for any operational rocket, and as for the advanced rocket chosen for NASA's Artemis III, there are many more requirements. SpaceX believed that Starship could meet some of those requirements through Flight 3, but unfortunately some issues have emerged and attracted the huge interest of government agencies, especially NASA. Indeed, NASA is disappointed with Starship's third flight test and said this. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. In a historic event that kicks off SpaceX's 2024 year, Starship was launched for the third time with several important firsts on the long road to landing astronauts on the moon, NASA officials said. Taking off from the Mars outpost in Starbase, Texas, this gigantic vehicle reached its planned orbit and achieved its first ever entry into space. It's safe to say that it progressed further than it did on any previous test. During its first two test flights last year, Starship exploded before making it to orbit around 4 and 12 minutes after launch, respectively. More notably, NASA especially paid tribute to Starship's propellant transfer demonstration in space. Given that thousands of pounds of propellant were transferred between internal tanks, this marks an important mark for future moon missions run by NASA's Artemis program and even longer missions into space. That said, engineers need to review data in the coming weeks to see exactly how well the test flight went. With each flight test, SpaceX attempts increasingly ambitious objectives for Starship to learn as much as possible for future mission systems development. The ability to test key systems and processes in flight scenarios like these integrated tests allows both NASA and SpaceX to gather crucial data needed for the continued development of Starship, HLS said Lisa Watson Morgan, the Human Landing System Program Manager at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. The fuel in Starship's tank is cryogenic, supercooled, and engineers want to ensure Starship's stability in space is not unduly affected by the operation, NASA officials wrote. Engineers will also seek to make the transfer as efficient as possible by examining the fluid's movement within the tanks, the agency added, with the aim to ensure Starship's Raptor engines receive needed propellant conditions to support restart in orbit. While coasting, not only did Starship complete initiating a propellant transfer demonstration, but it also finished the opening and closing of its payload door, aka the P's dispenser. This is very crucial for SpaceX's goal to launch the first payload on Starship this year, specifically Starlink V3. After the test, the vast majority of the space community congratulated SpaceX for its significant progress and remarkable achievements. Among that, can't help but mention NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson. And he also emphasized that together both SpaceX and NASA are making great strides through Artemis to return humanity to the moon, then look onward to Mars. Although Bill Nelson's quote suggests a bright outlook, in reality, the journey to success is still full of challenges with much work to be done before Artemis's moon missions. Indeed, NASA has been saying it wants repeated successes before putting astronauts on board Starship. As you already know, in June 2023, Agency official Jim Free said SpaceX will have to finish a significant number of launches ahead of Artemis program activities. Under the funding of up to $2.89 billion, SpaceX is required to develop the lunar lander version of Starship serving in Artemis 3. Starship HLS is a crewed vehicle, not something like Odysseus lander that can be upside down. No one desired to see HLS with the crew cabin inside wiggling, tipping over, or hitting any troubles during its mission. NASA has also raised concerns about the pace of Starship development a few times in recent months. In January, NASA leadership stated that its flagship Artemis II mission will be delayed from November 2024 until September 2025, and the Artemis III moon landing mission, originally targeted for late 2025, will now aim for September 2026. It means that we'll have to wait a little longer for humanity's return to the moon. The reason is in part due to Starship's slower development pace and in part due to various technical issues with NASA's Orion crew, spacecraft, private industry spacesuits, and other critical items.
During the two years between now and Artemis III, in addition to developing and testing some difficult technologies, typically in orbit refueling, SpaceX has to perform at least one demo showing it can land Starship safely on the lunar surface. When Starship has passed all the rigorous safety tests, it will be ready for use on a real mission. Therefore, it can be said that SpaceX faced a lot of pressure in the March test because they had to show that the Starship's progress was on track. The company set several wild plans, consisting of the first ever relight of a Raptor engine while in space and a controlled re-entry of Starship. That means not only does it have enough velocity to reach orbit, but Starship must also help it survive to re-entry. Unfortunately, in the test, Starship did not attempt its planned on-orbit relight of a single Raptor engine due to vehicle roll rates during the coast. The way down still saw more destructive ends as the first stage booster came in at more than 600 miles per hour hitting the Gulf of Mexico and the upper stage spacecraft broke up on re-entry halfway around the Earth. Explosions on both stages also attracted the attention of the FAA. It is the third time in 11 months. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is investigating a flight of SpaceX's Starship Mega Rocket. The test flight therefore qualifies as a mishap and the FAA wants to know what happened. The agency announced on the morning of March 15 that it would oversee a SpaceX-led investigation into Thursday's events. Some concerns have emerged that Starship's failure to re-entry could push up Flight 4's launch date by several months. By contrast, the perfect Flight 3 will lead to Flight 4, which could occur in a couple of weeks. Thanks to that, SpaceX can meet its plan to carry out at least six more flights this year. Obviously, it should not take a whole lot longer than that. Another aspect worth noting is SpaceX's future plans for its operational vehicles, Dragon for example. The firm currently stopped the Dragon spacecraft's production to focus more on Starship's project. Capping the fleet at four crew Dragons adds more urgency to the development of the astronaut capsule's eventual successor, Starship, SpaceX, Moon and Mars rocket. It also poses new challenges as the company learns how to maintain a fleet and quickly fix unexpected problems without holding up a busy schedule of astronaut missions. Anyway, everything is not hopeless. Starship is just in the first stage of its development progress. Thus, mistakes and failures are unavoidable. Keep in mind that SpaceX engineers are talented in solving serious rocket errors and their experiences accumulate exponentially after each flight test. You can see clearly that in Flight 3, when Ship 28 has reached orbit successfully, what its predecessor failed to attempt. Both Starship stages have entered the re-entry phase, notching another big step on the way to Mars. The FAA investigation even is not a big deal for SpaceX because the launch pad and other ground structures remain intact, meaning there likely won't be any involvement of the third party as FWS which contributed to Flight 2 being delayed for months. Thanks to that, SpaceX is more confident in pledging rapid flights with Starship soon, with four more of the 400-foot-tall, 122-meter vehicles already built in anticipation of test flights in the coming months. Siva Bharadvaj, a space operations engineer at SpaceX, said during March 14's launch broadcast that one of those spaceships already underwent a static fire test this week. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.